Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Quick take of our broadcast this evening. Been all day in studying the situation that we were talking about yesterday, uh, the Turkish military crossing into Syria. And I know that there is a lot of uncertainty among Syrians about what President Erdogan is actually considering doing as he's crossed over into the country there. Before I go into that, though, let me just share with you, uh, tsunamis have been spotted with a 7.3, actually a 7.3, not a 7.0, but a 7.3 magnitude aftershock of an earthquake. We know that over here uh, off of uh, the, uh, what they call France's New uh, Caledonia, which is off the coast of Australia here, had a several string of earthquakes there, starting off with like a six point uh, or high, a little over six point uh, some odd number, I think a 6.3 earthquake originally. Uh, then they kind of trimmered, began to slow down into the fours, the fives, and then went right back up, spot, uh, peaked all the way to a 7.3. Uh, they did issue a tsunami alert. They had also spotted tsunamis. They were expecting them to be at least a meter, a meter higher than what high tide would be. Uh, which is not that big of a of a tidal wave, but it was a very shallow earthquake, only about 10 kilo, or excuse me, 10 miles under the surface of the earth. There, uh, very concerning, no doubt. But then I began to look into the situation with Turkey more and more, and of course, uh, several articles: Iran, Russia, and Turkey diplomats meet to discuss Syria. And anybody that knows anything, you know, Turkey and Iran normally do not get along. Uh, especially uh, Russia, of course, in the past has been uh, at odds with Turkey, but, but Turkey is a NATO ally. Uh, more and more there's articles coming out, though, that that is changing. Uh, Turkey threatens to remove U.S. radar systems from its soil and indicates future uh, intentions for Syria. Now, in this article uh, here, uh, actually, that's a different article I'm thinking of. Actually, it's the one over here. Israeli officials push back against reported key principles of Trump peace plan. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself already. Let me jump back over to this article here with Turkey here. And this article here, as I begin to go through this article here, the U.S. is holding off on delivering the F-35 warplanes to Turkey because of its relationship with Russia and also looking at purchasing the S-400 system from Russia. Uh, so, been a lot of tit for tat type scenarios going on between Turkey and NATO, and uh, and seemingly Turkey is distancing, distancing itself from NATO more and more. But this troop movement inside of Syria makes me more concerned that what's actually happening is that uh, Turkey is advancing towards the border of Israel. Truly, a genuine Gog of Magog scenario would be Turkey itself. But the question still would remain as to which of the countries would actually follow suit. As you do the study on history about what's going on here, especially in a particular book I was looking at, I believe it's this one right here, uh, The Israeli Connection, Whom Israel Arms and Why, very interesting insights about what has happened over the years in Israel's history uh, and interestingly enough, Israel has often used the Christian populations in countries such as Lebanon to try to uh, give them a better advantage, uh, an advantage point, actually militarily, not so much as it would be the American Christians themselves. But if you think about it, this is what's really going on even under Trump's administration, is trying to build a coalition amongst the Christian community to get military support backing Israel. Now, I can understand this because being Jewish, I want to see America back Israel as well. But is it at the cost of destroying the entire Arab region? It lets me know that something more sinister is at work there. And I'm very concerned of the situation with uh, Erdogan and what his plans are. And I don't think they're going to be for the best interest of Israel at all. In fact, it may be for a more sinister 
uh, approach. It may be that Erdogan is working still for NATO, but very uh, subtly, we might add, in, in that regard there. So, uh, continuing on, Turkey and Iran could unite to overcome their Kurdish worries. This is another article that came out as to why Erdogan has sent in his convoys, mass military convoys, talking about dealing with the Kurds in the northern part and uh, north and western parts of, uh, northwest parts of Syria. Uh, of course, that will only give a justification for the U.S. to really come to battle, uh, or either they'll either hang the Kurds out to dry, or they'll really come to battle for the Kurds. It's just a matter of time. We'll have to see how this is going to play out. I've been looking at this in comparison to Scripture, to look at this as far as Gog of Magog. Are we seeing the beginning uh, of this really come together? I can't really say myself, but it is very troubling. Also, the New Arab uh, article that came out right here. This was another interesting one here. Erdogan is an enemy of Israel. Knesset speaker is actually coming out and saying that. Again, it shows that because as it is here, Yuli Yoel Edel Edelstein anger was sparked by Erdogan's comments Monday that Muslims should increase their visitation to the Al-Aqsa Mosque and fight against Judaization of Jerusalem. Now, this is an article that didn't just come out today or anything, but my point is in bringing this article up is to show that though there may seemingly be a working relationship between Israel and that of Turkey, underneath that surface, it's not such a friendly relationship to begin with. Very concerning to me. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.